जनन सुख मरण करुण मिलन मधुर स्मरण करुण काल वैश्यादिह सकल करुण समयादिपते अखिल करुण नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई आई सेट गुड मॉर्निंग I thought you were not in talking terms with me. <laughs> Raman was referring to Socrates saying uh, the worst of all evils is ignorance. That is true only if you are not conscious that you are ignorant if you are conscious that you are ignorant then ignorance is a tremendous possibility the only problem with most human beings is they don't know that they do not know the difference between enlightenment and ignorance is just this an enlightened person knows that he is ignorant the ignorant does not know that they are ignorant i must tell you can i expose my ignorance to you hello are you dead serious about even ignorance what is this <laughs> this happened to me when i was just 4 5 years of age suddenly i realized one day that i actually do not know anything do not know anything means do not know anything at all it's like somebody gives me a glass of water i do not know what is water well i know how to use it but i do not know what it is even now this is the fact with you you really do not know what is water do you hello two thirds of your body is water two thirds of the planet is water if we're looking for life we look for one drop of water somewhere it is the only substance found on the planet in all the three different states but do you know what is water we know how to use it we know how to abuse it but we don't know what it is with all this scientific exp- exploration we still do not know one atom in its entirety because over 98% of the atom is empty and we do not know what it is if you say nothing in his head his head is empty this means he is ignorant isn't it so the very cosmos is ignorant because 99% of the cosmos is empty but in this nothingness a phenomenal intelligence is hidden which is the very basis of who we are who we are is just a speck but uh, we are ignorant of that most of the time when we are operating when we read a book we may know but when we are walking on the street we are ignorant of that see uh, no you're very serious when you're so serious you won't get ignorance you'll get knowledge that's a problem <clears throat> the more knowledgeable you think you are the more serious you become isn't it so i was speaking at the princeton university and there were little over 400 people except a handful of young faces which look bright 
Everybody else had a long face, an extra long face. I looked around, what is the matter here? In a university particularly, the faces are extra long, you know. Then I thought maybe it's a weight of knowledge which is uh, elongating their faces. And then I tell them a joke, they agree with me. <laughs> then I said, what's wrong with all these people over thirty years of age, what's the matter with you? One lady stands up and says, they're all married. <laughs> I thought people are getting married to multiply their joy. If they're getting married to multiply their misery, there has to be a law about this. <laughs> so, you will see those who consider themselves knowledgeable have always become horribly serious, so serious that life bypassed them. At least in India, we use English language like this, if somebody comes and says, my grandmother is serious, what do you think? Hello? <laughs> On the way out, hello? If someone says my grandmother is serious, we think she's on the way out. Well, if you're serious, that's what it means. <laughs> Whether you're way out, way out of your business or your career or a life, it's a question mark, but you're way out of something. <laughs> In this vast cosmos, this solar system is a speck. You agree with me? Tomorrow morning, if the entire solar system vanishes, it's not even in the account book, nobody's going to miss it. That's how small it is. In that speck of a solar system, planet Earth is a micro speck. In that micro speck, Hyderabad city is a super micro speck. In that, you are a big man. <laughs> now, this lack of perspective will definitely lead you to trouble. Definitely lead you to trouble. Just now, uh, uh, Sadhguru, here in this room, 186 billion dollar business, Eighty percent are right here for you. I thought it's only one eighty-six. But its real value has come because of the number of zeros somebody added. Zero means nothing, isn't it? Hello? You must understand, we are very proud as Indians that we invented the zero. Zero is not a number, but without it, no number really gets its value, isn't it? Zero is not really a number, zero means ignorance. We understood that what we know is only this much. What we do not know is the possibility. What we know is not the possibility. What we do not know is the terrain we can cover, isn't it? So when I was four or five years of age, I just realized I did not even know what is water. If somebody gave me a glass of water, I kept staring at it for four or five hours at a stretch. If I found a dry leaf, I was staring at it for many hours. If I sat up in my bed, I was just staring at the darkness for the whole night. My dear father, being a physician, started thinking I need a psychiatric evaluation <laughs> This boy is simply staring at something all the time, unblinking, it looks like he's lost his mind. My problem is, I look at this and I've still not figured this out. I'm not able to shift my attention to anything else. If I look at something, I'm just looking at it, not able to shift my attention because I still don't know this, how do I go to something else? So in this condition, they also sent me to school. And my mother said, you must pay attention to the teacher. I went and paid attention to the teacher. <laughs> the kind of attention they would have never received in their life. <laughs> Initially, I sort of understood what they were trying to say. After some time, I realized that uh, they're only making sounds. I'm making up the meanings in my mind. Even now it is so. Hello? 
If you did not know English language, if I speak, I'm only making sounds for you, isn't it? So when I realized it's me who is making up the meanings, I stopped making meanings. I just heard the sounds with full attention. Hour after hour, teacher after teacher coming and making sounds and going, making sounds and going, it became very amusing. A big smile spread on my face. They were not amused at all. <laughs> So this went on and uh, I went through school with maximum value to my marks cards, always zero, 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 six zeros I got always. How much is six zero? Million, huh? Hello? See, I started with millions right from primary school. <laughs> Only one was missing, I was the one. <laughs> so about nine years ago, this school where I studied, almost forty-five years ago or more, they came to invite me for their one hundred and twenty-fifth anniversary. I said, see please, why me? I was not just a not good student, I was not even a student. I only came there when it was absolute must. Don't call me to speak to the children, I am not an inspiration for them. <laughs> then they said, Sadhguru, no, our school has produced union ministers, our school has produced cricketing stars, film stars, a variety of people, but you are the only mystic, so you have to come. I said, okay. <laughs> so I went there, I stood up in the quadrangle to speak, looked around the same oppressive buildings. And I just looked at this classroom and suddenly remembered, I was twelve years of age. One afternoon, a teacher is trying to get response from me. They ask me a question and he wants me to respond. But by then I've graduated to a place, if I look at somebody, I don't even hear what they're talking. I know their past, present and future, but I don't know what even they're, they're talking, I don't even hear them anymore. So I'm just looking at him. He asked me a question in so many different ways, but these are days, for many days I don't utter a word, because when you don't know anything, what do you speak? When you don't know anything, you must shut up, isn't it? So I didn't say anything. After thirty-five, forty minutes of trying to get an answer or response from me, he got so mad, he came and held me by the shoulder, shook me violently and said, you must either be the divine or the devil, I think you're the later. I was not abused by this or insulted by this, Till now my problem was, what is this, what is that, what is that, what is that? I'm a cloud of billion questions all the time. But one thing was certain that this is me. But suddenly this guy confused me about this also. I looked, what is this? Is this divine, is this devil, what the hell is this? When I stared at myself it didn't work so I closed my eyes. There began my exploration into the intelligence of ignorance. Because the more you realize that I do not know, the more your intelligence is always super perked up. The moment you think I know, it goes to sleep. Hello? If I put you in a pitch dark room, most probably none of you have ever been in a pitch dark room. When I say a pitch dark room, absolutely no light. You cannot… you cannot even see you have a body. We do this for those who are on the yogic transformation. We put them into a pitch dark room where after some time they don't even feel their body simply because they are not seeing it. It takes visual reference to know it is there. For three days they did not see their body completely. Oh, only breath is there, body is not there. You must have rooms like this in your industry. You must put some people into pitch dark room. You will see after some time they won't have a body, just breath is going on and nothing else. It's a very good state to be. <laughs> so, I closed my eyes for long periods of time, days it went on like this. And I realized, if you do not make any conclusion, what you think is knowledge is just conclusions that you have made. 
Science is proving this to you, every two years they're changing their opinion about everything. Obviously, you made the wrong conclusion two years ago, isn't it? Even about what to eat <laughs> what is the human diet? Every other creature on the planet has figured out what is the best diet for them, except the human beings <laughs> This is because we have conclusions about everything. Everything that you see, you have to make a conclusion, otherwise you feel stupid. You have to have an opinion and an idea about everything. If you pay enough attention to an ant, you will understand the way it's constructed, you have no clue. It's one of the best machines you find on the planet. Do you agree with me? Have you ever paid attention to an ant? If you built a car which could move like an ant, as quietly, as mobile and as agile as it is. It would be fantastic, isn't it? But we don't pay attention because we have conclusions. If you want to open up anything, you need attention. The keenness of your attention will determine how many dimensions of life do you open up. If your attention is absolute, there is no door in the universe that you cannot open. This is how life is made. It is just that people are always busy accumulating conclusions. Accumulation is the way. With accumulation you will be burdened. With attention, all doors will open. It happened, a man unloaded a big grandfather clock from the truck and he was carrying it into the museum, a very ancient piece precious. So he carried it on his back with great difficulty he was going. A drunk who was passing by said, Hey mister, what you need is a wristwatch. <laughs> well, if you're only interested in segmenting the day into twenty-four hours, a wristwatch will do it. But there may be other things to do with the day. There may be other things to do with time. There may be other things to do with life, but right now, I'm sorry if I insult you, I'm not sorry actually. <laughs> I think right now the industry in India, especially the IT industry, is still in the survival mode, enjoying the benefits of inexpensive human resource. Human resource can be used two ways, just to provide jobs and make a living or if we use the upper part of the human being, not the hair, you know. Because uh, people tell me there is uh, about uh, some seventy times more investment in hair products than neurosciences on the country, in the world rather. There is, <laughs> there is seventy times more business going on with hair products than neurosciences. So obviously we thought hair is more important than the head. This has to change, especially with this industry because this is not about information. This is about exploring human intelligence, what are all the different possibilities. Information, when you use the word information, it amounts to accumulation, isn't it? As you're in the industry, many of you who've been there for ten, twenty years, you know information that you thought was very precious ten years ago is trash today, yes or no? And as days go… as things go by, it won't take ten years, within six months it'll be trash. So information is… Machines can carry the information. Human beings need not carry the information. Human beings are supposed to be in a condition where their intelligence is on full-time, not part-time, full-time on. If it has to be full-time on, you need to come to a place that I do not know. This is not a philosophy, actually you do not know. You may be very successful but you do not know. Do you really know? Have you figured out what is the nature of your life at least? Forget about anything else. 
the most intimate thing in your life is yourself, isn't it so? Hello? You're getting very serious, like my grandmother. But she passed away long time ago, so I'm telling you, this is what happened to her <laughs> She got serious and then she passed. You getting serious? <laughs> if you are conscious, it's not a philosophy, it's not a slogan, I do not know, I do not know, I know I do not know, this is not it. It is an awareness of ignorance. When you're conscious of your ignorance, your intelligence is always standing up tall and alert. As I said, if I make this hall pitch dark and if I ask you to walk, all… everything that you have, is it fully alert? Whatever you have, hello? See, if you're testing me, who is the yogi here? <laughs> Whatever I say. See, I can sit here for the next hour without moving my eyeballs. I have a huge practice. Don't compete with me on that one, huh? <laughs> I'm asking a question. <laughs> if I put you here and make this hall pitch dark and ask you to walk, will every sense and every damn thing that you have in you fully alert or no? The moment there is light, you assume you know, isn't it? You assume you know. The moment you assume you know, you don't see anything in your way, <laughs> you simply walk. If you walk from here to there, I want to tell you, if you walk from that end to this end of the hall, the number of visual factors that are here, the number of smells that are here, the number of sounds that are here, from here to there, there are at least five hundred things to notice, minimum. Most people don't notice five things. Yes, this is a fact. Most people do not know five things because they're blustered up with what they know. No, ignorance is a tremendous possibility. Ignorance is a problem when you're not conscious you're ignorant. Ignorance is a tremendous possibility when you know you're ignorant, everything is up. Your intelligence being up every moment of your life is the most important thing. Because the only thing, the only thing that set you apart from other creatures is your intelligence. You're not as strong as a tiger, are you? Huh? You're not as fast as a cheetah, you're not as resilient as an ant or a cockroach. It's just that little cerebral development happened. If you want to keep this on all the time, the fundamental is to see, I do not know. The more you pay attention to everything, the more you realize you don't know a damn thing in the universe. Isn't it so? And if you do not know, you will be fully alert, intelligence fully on. In that condition, many things will come out. What people think is a great research will come out in a moment just by paying attention to it. If you gather information and think you know, it will lead to repetitiveness, it will lead to repetitiveness. In your industry, repetitiveness is death. It'll get you. It happened. There was a man in southern India whose name was Topiwala. This happened in 1910. Topiwala means… that's his second name but that's also his profession. In the world these traditions are there that many people take their profession as their second name. There is a carpenter, there is a goldsmith, there is a dabbawala, there is a daruwala, there is a all kinds. So this is a topiwala, that means a hat seller. He is going from village to village selling hats. One afternoon, he felt tired. He came and sat down in the tropical heat under a tree. Only in tropical heat you realize what it means to be under a tree. 
he came and sat down under a tree, he opened his meager lunch, ate it and dozed off. After some time he woke up, he looked, his whole stock of hats were gone. He got up, looked all over the place, no sign of hats, he looked here, there, everywhere, no sign of the hats at all. Everything that you can do, you will do. When you don't know what to do, what do you do? So he also looked up in prayer. There he saw a bunch of monkeys sitting there, hats on. Then he screamed at them, they screamed at him. He abused them in the filthiest language, they did it in their own language. Then he picked up whatever he could and threw it at them. and they picked up whatever they could and threw it back at him. Then out of sheer frustration, not knowing what to do, he took his hand and flung it on the ground. All the monkeys took their hats and flung it on the ground. He picked up his hats and went about his business. Two thousand eighteen, September twenty-third, another Topiwala also going around selling hats from village to village. He came in the afternoon, settled down under a tree, opened his elaborate lunch, you know, twenty-first century. Everybody is eating more than what they can digest. And he ate his meal and promptly fell asleep. When he woke up, all his hats were gone. He did not look here and there, he looked straight up, knowledge, you know. <laughs> All the monkeys were sitting there with their hats on. He got up and jived. <laughs> All the monkeys jived. He made funny faces, they made funnier faces at him. He had all the fun he wanted to have. When he was done, he took his hat and flung it on the ground. A baboon of a monkey quickly came down the tree, picked up the hat, <laughs> walked up to him and gave him a tight slap in the face and said, You idiot, you think only you had a grandfather? <laughs> See, there is scientific evidence that monkeys are evolving. There is no such evidence about uh... <laughs> So you are in a business where uh, your investment is not information, your investment is an agile intelligence. If you want to have an agile intelligence every moment of your life, to come to a very profound state of ignorance. See, actually address this and see. People ask me, Sadhguru, how do you become a mystic? I say, when you realize you don't know a damn thing, then you become a mystic. No, I also know I don't know some things. Ah, that's the problem. You know some things and you do not know some things. That is a serious problem. If you know everything, it would be fantastic maybe, but I haven't seen anybody like that. But if you know nothing, then your mind becomes like a plain mirror. No any kind of distortions, it's just a plain mirror. Plain mirror shows everything just the way it is, isn't it? Information means, taking that analogy further, suppose the mirror at home, the mirror at your home had memory. You know, I don't know if you guys have done this to your mirrors, IT industry. If your mirror had memory, 
when you go and stand in front of it, it will show you everything but reality, isn't it? Huh? Even if there was a minute residual memory, you wouldn't see what is there to see. You would see something else. That's what is happening to your mind. Too much information leads to this. Information means, information is there in the body. This body carries much more information than your brain can ever carry. Do you remember ten generations ago how your grandfather, grandmother looked like? I'm asking you, no, but your body remembers because their nose is sitting on your face right now. Your grandfather's nose is sitting on your face or not? Well, a million years ago how your forefathers were, even the skin tone your body remembers, isn't it? Never confused? So obviously there is enormous information here, you don't have to carry it in your head. Your head must be ignorant always, super ignorant, absolutely ignorant. In ignorance, it is alert. In ignorance, it's plain. In plain mirror, you see everything just the way it is. If you want to walk through this world successfully, if you want to see everything the way it is, because if you want to conduct anything sensibly, first and foremost thing is you see everything just the way it is, not the way you think. If you do not see everything the way it is, you will always do something inappropriate to the given situation. If you see things the way they are, you will do the right thing. Almost everybody has the needed intelligence to do the right thing if they see what is there. But everybody sees it in their own way, according to the information that they carry. So technology industry, I think India has come to a place where initially our only concern was to walk people out of their poverty and improvised nature of the society. Well, we are reasonably successful in the last twenty-five years, pretty successful I would say. Though there's a whole negative commentary going on, I would say, just look back and see how you were twenty-five years ago and how you are today. We are largely successful in that. But now a time has come, uh, at least a segment of you, both in terms of your brains, your time and your money as companies, have to invest in something that does not produce results tomorrow morning, but has a long-term implication. Well, you may… in the industry you may call it r and I'm saying, for me, you have to invest in ignorance, all that you do not know. Right now, investment is only in things that we know, making products out of it, selling it today, making money and thinking we are great, it's fine, nothing wrong with it, but you have to invest in ignorance. Things that we do not know, we have to invest in that. If you do not have the courage to invest in ignorance, then, you know, we could be very easily outdated in no time because information becomes outdated very quickly these days. If you have questions, any kind of question, please. Please take the microphones. Folks, uh, if you raise your hand, uh, we'll get a mic to you for you to be able to ask a question, we'll, we'll get the mic to you there, sir. Namaskaram, Sadhguru, Anand from Singapore. My Let's question, go. Sadhguru, is how do you measure ignorance? How do you? Measure ignorance. Oh, how do you measure a zero? Just like that. <laughs> See, Our knowledge, whatever we know, even if you have read the libraries on this planet, still what we know is just a minuscule in the existence, isn't it? But ignorance is always boundless. Do you think there is a boundary to your ignorance? Hello? It's a fantastic way to be. 
you are completely boundless in your ignorance. Your knowledge is always with small boundaries, but your ignorance is boundless. If you do not, instead of measuring the boundless, if you dissolve into the boundless, you will become a yogi. Eh? <laughs> please. <laughs> Sadhguru. Who is speaking, please? Sadhguru here. Um, people would see what they're missing. If you can the... hold the microphone a little closer, Sorry. yeah. Uh, people generally would see whatever they're missing in their life in you. Like they might see a friend or they might see a parent or a teacher. Now I see a happy manager. You manage I'm not, a lot I'm of. I'm not getting this properly. The Hello? Yeah. Is this okay? Like people see whatever they miss in life in you. Like it could be a friend, a mentor, a teacher, or such. I see a happy manager. You manage a lot of activities across the globe. You're talking about me? Yeah. Oh. And good, uh, good. also at the same time, you have time for discourses and all and still you're happy in the sense that you manage a lot of people and you still are happy. Now what is the secret to that? Oh. <laughs> uh, the difference is uh, either you can be in pursuit of happiness or your life can be an expression of your joy. That's the choice you have. <laughs> If you're in pursuit of your happiness, well, you're always kicking the can and running behind it. See, uh, when you were a child, when you were five years of age, you were joyful by your own nature, isn't it so? Hello? At that time, somebody had to make you unhappy, but now somebody has to make you happy. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> When you are five years of age, if you are that joyful, by the time you are thirty, you should have become ecstatic, isn't it? I I'm saying if there was growth in your company. <laughs> no, when you are five, you were very joyful by your own nature. But today, if you have to be happy, how many things we have to fix in the world, your husband should be like that, your wife should be like that, and your child should be like that, your company should be like this, your bank balance should be like this, and the world must change before you are happy. So, you have put yourself into a self-defeating situation. There is no way, there is no way the world will ever happen hundred percent the way you want it. Yes or no? If you're just two people in the family, does the other person hundred percent the way you want them? I'm asking you, even if you get a dog, it doesn't happen. <laughs> These days they do their own thing <laughs> So, somebody else will never happen the way you want hundred percent. Somebody else doesn't happen, the world doesn't happen, this is not the problem. The question is just this. Are you happening the way you want yourself to be? If you happen just the way you want yourself to be, would you keep yourself blissful or miserable? You must choose, I'm going to bless you right now. If you happen just the way you want to be, would you keep yourself miserable or blissful? Blissful. Others didn't choose, I'm blessing you. So, human experience, fundamentally, essentially is happening from within you. Pain and pleasure happens from within you, joy and misery happens from within you, agony and ecstasy happens from within you. Everything that you ever experienced happened from within you, isn't it? Well, the world didn't happen your way, that's not the problem. But <laughs> at least what's happening from within you must happen your way, otherwise you lost your fundamental stock. Yes or no? See, he's not happening my way, that's not the problem. If I'm not happening my way, I'm a lost case. Yes or no? 
This is because we, you know, we gave you a super, super, super computer. This is the most sophisticated machine on the planet. Do you agree with me, the human mechanism? Huh? But did you read the user's manual? Huh? Have you? No? Simply, accidentally you're handling it? When you handle things accidentally, being anxious is natural. Once you get anxious when things go wrong, becoming fearful is natural. When things go very wrong, you'll be terrorized, that is natural. So, about management, yes, there are mega pro projects which you are managing, a whole big institution run by volunteers. When I say run by volunteers, nine million part-time volunteers and over four thousand full-time volunteers, managing volunteers <laughs> means none of them are qualified for the job. And you can't fire them for inefficiency because they're volunteers. You do this in your company, in three days you'll go nuts, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> yes, nobody is qualified for the job and you have to get everything done properly and you can't fire them. But you come and see our events and our situations, they run in such a way, good way that Raman came and saw how we run the place and that's why he has me here <laughs> If I was a lousy manager, he wouldn't bring me here. <laughs> so, this is happening, you must understand the significant aspect of being human is not just your physical capabilities or your intellectual circus that you do. The significant aspect of being human is we can do everything consciously. No other creature can do this, isn't it? Hello? The only significant thing about us is Whatever every creature does, we also do the same thing, but we can do it consciously. Because we can do it consciously, it must happen the way we want it, isn't it? If not the outside, at least the inside. If you conducted your life consciously, definitely you would keep it the way you want. If you, want, if you keep it the way you want, for yourself, I'm saying, would you want pleasantness or unpleasantness? You must choose, I'm going to bless you. Pleasantness. You may call it success, you may call it heaven, you may call it meditation, you may call it prayer, you may call it money, you call it what you want. Essentially, you're looking for pleasantness, isn't it? Pleasantness of experience. In body, mind, energy, emotion and surroundings, you want pleasantness. This is what you want for yourself. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, but what you want for yourself is very clear. Something so simple is not happening. Why? This is all it is. See, when you just sit alone, you must experiment with this young man. Three days, just close doors and simply sit alone. No reading, no texting, no internet browsing, no television watching, no book reading, nothing, simply stay alert and simply sit. You will see, you will go quite crazy. All this so-called being busy is keeping you masked. You simply sit by yourself, people go into all kinds of misery. See, if you're miserable when you're alone, you're obviously in bad company, isn't it? Hello? You need to fix that. Guruji. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm afraid we do not I have… I have just uh, one and a half minutes to die because he time. said 9.55 is dead stop. I would rather so stop we, than being we, dead. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, the <laughs> curtain raiser to WCIT NASCOM 2018, the intelligence of ignorance. Sadhguru, thank you very, very much.